Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. We're here in Prescott at the Digital Barn, and we're looking at motion. And we're going to work you with 3D text. Well, we're going to use 3D text in order to create an animated 3D logo. Oh, 3D logo. Yeah, yeah. Which is but, really 3D text. But text is the trick to get there, right? right? Exactly. So let's just go right in here. So I have a logo here. This is an Illustrator file, and this is the SCP Exchange logo. Yeah, it looks familiar to yeah, me. Yeah, looks kind of familiar. It looks, is that like a bat head at the top? Uh, I don't know, but it's an X. Okay, it's, sorry. It's, it looks like yeah, a bat. bat head. It does, <laughs> it does. So I'm not going to, this, this is about animating it, not creating 3D, but as, as a quick reminder, um, what I did is I saved out each of those separate four elements out of Illustrator as separate SVG files. And by the way, we cover this in detail in our um, Warp Speed Motion 3D tutorial, the whole process in detail. And we've also covered it on previous Mac breaks and under fives. Mm. But I save out those separately, and I have them here as separate SVG files. You see um, they're kind of off the edge of the screen a little bit yeah. here, but I've got them separately. And then I'm using this free web-based app called Glifter where you can make, you can take your different shapes and make them into uh, letters in a like font. SVG shapes and turn them into a font. Yes, so I, I can just take these guys and drag them all in here and actually turn that into a font and save that, it'll be a font. So this is capital A, B, C, and D. So you just save it. And I'm going to skip that part and jump right to motion. And in motion, I have here uh, my reference object and a background because I'm going to want to match to that. Sure. But I want to recreate it with those letters. So I'm going to select this group here, T for the text tool, and I'm going to click and hold Shift A B C D. What? Now, and I got I got those. The reason I Why got them right away. To those letters. Because, okay, to review, uh -huh. when oh, we went it. in, in Glifter, we, we it. said, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Sorry, you did say that. I wasn't listening. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to make them a little bigger. And this is what's kind of so cool about this. So here these guys are, and uh, they're roughly that size. Now, because this is actually text, I can manipulate them with text tools and animate them with text tools. So for example, I'm going to choose to use the adjust glyph, the uh, transform glyph tool, which allows me to select each of these separately and, and them over. put them where I need to. I'm not going to do a perfect job here because um, I want to do this fairly quickly, but I'm going to basically line them up where they need to go. Um, and these, everything here is a little smaller than ours, but uh, we can line them up to the reference and get a general sense of where they go. I'm going to turn that reference off. And so now I've got my logo rebuilt, but it's one text object, okay? It's not multiple. It's a single line of text. It's, you know, basically a word made out of these fonts right. that I'm setting up. Fantastic. So, so now with a single text object, I'm going to make it into 3D. So from the, uh, in, from the text inspector, I'll enable 3D text. And let's make it quite a bit deeper. And I'll go down and I'm going to select a stone texture like uh, quartz. Just do some kind of dramatic. And I'll add a camera in here. Now, I'm going to keep as 2D because I don't want these other background items to be 3D. I'll just make this group a 3D group by clicking the little 3D icon there. Mm -hmm. And that, the reason for that is if I want to turn this background on, I can rotate and it won't rotate the background. But there's our object. In 3D. In 3D, yeah. I'm going to turn that back off again. And I don't know why all the different objects don't have the same depth. So I'm going to adjust that to make sure they're all just the same thickness. And there we have a very thick <laughs> um, 3D logo. Right. Okay, so we've, we've created our 3D logo. Now here's what's kind of cool because what I can do with my camera, I can create kind of a, a dramatic orientation to this for where I want it to end up, maybe something like that. And I hope SUPG Exchange doesn't mind me messing with their logo because I got rid of all the standard colors. But now I can go ahead and use different types of text animation behaviors to, um, to animate this. So for example, I can go to Text Basic and choose uh, Rotate In. And then when I play, each of those rotates in and you've immediately got kind of a dramatic 3D animation of a simple flat 2D logo. It's amazing. Here's another example. I'll go to um, back to I hit undo, and I'll go to text energetic, and take hop in. And now, each of these logo parts 
kind of <laughs> bounces into place. <laughs> Which may be a little bit too playful, but kind of a fun kind of thing. Or really what I like to do um, is to use the sequence text behavior I to do my own one. That one. I know, I'm always doing that, right? So text animation, sequence text, and I'll make it last, oh, about this long. You know, but here's the key about this. Um, because, because each of these are part of the same word, anything I do will affect them all equally. So if I just take this up, for instance, and rotate it and play, they'll all do that same thing, okay? Right. Which I don't really want here. I'm going to increase the spread a little bit. So the thing I want to point out with the sequence text behavior is there's this great section called variance. And if I open up variance here in the inspector, let's back up so we can see how they're all floating down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to back up also and make them float down from higher up. So they really start off the screen like about like that. Um, so if I crank up the variance amount, they'll start from different places as I crank that up. Completely different places. And I can use a generate button to determine where they start from. I just could keep clicking that and find different places. Is that a random generator? Yeah, exactly. And then I'm just going to add opacity too so they start out when they're not visible, so in case they're on the screen. So I'll bring opacity to zero. So now they each are coming from different places into, into position. Let's also change the and speed. randomly, I might add. Ease out. Yeah, so now I'll come to a nice smooth stop. And let's make this sequence text a little bit longer for a little more drama. And you can have each of those fall into position. The last thing I want to show you on here is the speed, the ease out that we have applied is over the whole animation. So the whole thing comes to a nice smooth stop. Right. But you can choose to apply that per object. So each one that comes in comes to a nice smooth landing, which I like to do on something like this. So you have each of those come in. And there very quickly by using text behaviors. It's just kind of funny that we're using text behaviors to animate a 3D parts of a 3D logo. Right. Yeah. So you're able to use 3D textures on a logo and 3D behaviors on a logo um, to do this kind of thing in motion. It's fantastic. So you want to check out uh, the aforementioned uh, Warp speed, warp, speed, speed, warp, warp speed motion 3D, <laughs> and uh, we have lots of tutorials in 3D. He's got a full 3D t tutorial on working with text and motion on, on our website. Um, excellent, excellent ideas that people can, can use to apply their, to their own stuff. A lot of people ask us all the time, how do I animate my logo? Here you go. Here you go. So check us out on the usual social media sites, links below. And uh, thank you for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next week.